Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's me Mariana and today I'm here with my first study vlog ever and this video was actually filmed a long time ago. I think it was back in November 2019 and I never uploaded it so I'm sorry guys. This time I'm gonna go ahead and upload it. I know it's a little bit old but I think it's still nice to watch and for this day I was actually studying in France. I was doing my exchange year in France and I'm already back in my country which is Brazil but back then I was studying at university and I was studying mechanical engineering. In this specific day, I was studying structures. So studying how structures support certain ways, how much they can support in total, and also how the forces work on different structures. So for this class, I had a very, very nice book. It's not actually a book. It is actually a handbook that my teacher made. So it's very well designed and the contents are very nice because it's all very well explained and you can understand perfectly and it also has a couple of example, examples that help a lot anyway since my teacher made this handbook the classes follow a specific timeline that is also defined on the handbook which is always helpful because this way you can try read ahead of the class and when you get into the class you already kind of know what the teacher is gonna say and what he's gonna explain of course it's not usually what i do because it takes a lot of time to do that and I usually prefer to attend the class and then after the class I will study the part of the content that the teacher explained. I, I just think it's easier that way, otherwise I would study before class and then during class and then after class and this wouldn't be very helpful or productive. Anyway, this day I was studying the first chapters of the handbook and what I usually do is make a summary of all the contents of the chapters but this day I actually decided to first read the chapter after I was done with a small section of the chapter I would write some notes on it and usually the most important formulas and also things I needed to remember usually when I'm studying with a hand handbook or a book I usually go ahead and mark the chapters that I need to get done that day or that week. This way I know exactly how many pages I still have to go before finishing the chapter I need to finish. And it's usually very helpful because sometimes I'm like, oh, how many pages do I, have? Do I still have to study? And then it's like two pages and I already know that. It's a little bit of a motivation to finish everything you need to finish. Now, talking about my, my notes, the way I, I like to do them is basically with a black pen. The one I use is the Pentel Energel 0.5 and I also use my mechanical pencil to put on comments and also important information that my teacher says in the class or something I need to remember about a formula. And finally, I also use markers. More specifically, I choose one color of marker for each subject I have. So for mechanical structures, which is this class, I used the purple one. And I usually use my markers to mark, of course, the titles and subtitles and also to customize my notes this way you feel a little bit more connected to what you're writing and you put a little bit of a design or a little bit of you into the notes which makes this much more personal this day i was also doing a couple of exercises because i think the most important thing you can do is exercises when you're studying because you know exactly what you're not completely understanding and you make sure you know how to solve problems and stuff like that for your exams and also other types of work so i really think it's important to do exercises and after you're done with a chapter or a section i would highly recommend you do a couple of them just to make sure you understood everything one thing that I also do is use my mechanical pencil to mark important formulas on the book or handbook. And this also depends if the book is yours or not. If you grabbed a book from the library, of course you can't write on it, so don't do that. But if you have 
your own book or a handbook, go ahead and make a couple of notes while you're reading. For example, if you thought a, a phrase was very important, what you can do is use your marker to mark it, or you can put a little comment with pencil just to make sure you remember to put that on your notes. My method of studying is very, very long, so it takes a lot of time to do all my notes and also to summarize the whole chapters and sections of the handbooks and books I have. That's why I usually try to study way ahead of the exams and stuff like that. This way I can read through the chapters very slowly and just make sure I understand everything and also I can take notes slowly about it. And usually what I do is when the exam is coming up, I only study with my notes. I don't need to study with the book anymore because all the important information is already on my notebook. And that's why I usually go ahead and start studying way ahead of, of everyone. This way I don't have to worry about reading 20 pages for a specific test or exam. I don't know about you guys, but I have very bad memory. So one thing I do is, besides of course doing my notes, when the exam is coming up, I read through all my notes and then I make a little summary of one page only with all the infor important formulas and information I need to have for the exam. And this is very challenging because usually I really like to make notes that are very clear and explain very well things. But when you're making notes and a summary specifically, you have to be very, very concise. Otherwise, there is no point in making a summary. So I tried my best to only use one page for the final summary before the exam. And this is what I keep as well as my notes. My notes and also the summaries I always keep because they will be helpful in the future if I ever need to look back on a certain subject. And they are also helpful to my friends who didn't take the course yet. And I usually, at the end of the semester, I, I give my notes, my notebooks, and also my summaries to my friends so they can use it during the, their next semester. And then I'll just go and get it back at the end. One thing I forgot to mention is that because I was studying in France at that time, my classes were all in French and the handbook is also in French. It's kind of challenging um, studying mechanical engineering in other languages, but because I speak English and Portuguese, French is not that far off and the technical terms are very similar and it's kind of easy to understand. Of course, there are a couple of words that I can never remember what they mean. And for that reason, I always keep my cell phone close by. This way I can go on Google and translate a couple of words or just look for the definition on Google as well. And this is very important for you if you are studying in another language and you cannot for any reason remember a couple of words and their meaning, just go ahead and search it on Google and make sure you write it down on your book or on your notes. This way, every time you read that same word, you will remember what it means. Some people ask me how to make good looking diagrams and to tell you the truth, is all about trying and trying and trying. The more you practice, the better you get at it. So you'll be able to do prettier diagrams and also to finish them quicker, which means you'll probably be able to draw all the diagrams your teacher shows you during the classes. And that's usually what I do because I wrote a lot during my last year of school and also because I write a lot in college, I usually am able to write everything my teacher puts down on the board and also all the diagrams, but this takes a long time to master. So don't be upset if you're not able to write everything and draw everything very pretty because it is impossible to be perfect at anything at the beginning. So just keep practicing. Another trick I'll give you guys for diagrams and drawings, you can just do a very simple outline of the diagram with a pencil and then when you get home, actually finish the diagram with a pen, colors and stuff like that. This way you save a lot of time during class and you actually pay attention to what your teacher is saying. 
One thing that I struggle a lot while studying is having my phone close by, even though I use it eventually to search for words and, and stuff like that. It also distracts me a lot because I get a lot of messages on YouTube and also Instagram and WhatsApp. So it's very distracting. One thing I decided to do to solve this problem was to download an app called Forest. And in this app, you basically plant a little tree and you cannot use your phone while the tree is growing. Otherwise, you'll kill the tree. So you can put a timer, for example, half an hour, 40 minutes, even 10 minutes. And during this time, the tree will be growing. And if you, and if you use your phone for anything, the tree will die. And you don't want your tree to die because you want to build a very pretty forest and stuff like that. So usually when I grow a tree, I don't use my phone. And that's very helpful. So if you guys struggle with a with using your phone while studying try out try out this app again it's called forest it's free and it's very pretty i really like it so just give it a chance sometimes i give myself objectives that i cannot reach during one day for example finish two chapters sometimes this is too challenging for me so what I like to do is divide the chapter into sections and choose how many sections I want to do per day. And by the end of the study section, if I am too tired to finish the sections, I'll go ahead and just leave it for the next day. Because when we get too tired, we start reading the same part over and over again and not understanding. So it's better, so it's better just to rest and keep going the next day. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to leave your like and also subscribe. I hope, you, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.